Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, it's note-taking on the iPad part two. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're doing our second part. So if you haven't watched part one, you may want to. But this is our second part about note taking. And this time, I want to talk about how we organize our notes. So what we know about note taking is the note taking itself is really important. We do that while we read or while we listen to video or lecture or whatever else we're doing, and that's fantastic. But then we need to process the notes. And a lot of research has been done on the fact that processing the notes is where a, a lot of the learning happens, and definitely the memorizing happens. So actively engaging with the text you created or the picture or whatever it is and bringing it in. So let's look at some apps that can help you do that. And, um, if we go here, there's different kinds of learning. So we'll start with the simplest, and that is using flashcards. Flashcards are a great way to learn terms and things you just need to memorize. It's good if you make them. Memory is better if you're actually working on making them, and then you practice them. And there are quite a few, and if you go back into our older programs, you will see some in flashcard programs we've shown in the past. But I want to share with you uh, flashcards today. Flashcards is a program that allows you to download card sets that somebody else made or create your own. Again, it is better to create your own, but sometimes it's really useful if you're a teacher and you want to share it with students, or if you're a student and you want to share it with peers, it's a great way to do that. You can download cards that are available. And by the way, there's a new feature in it, which is to create a backup online. So you can always download and share across devices. But let's look at a card set that was made by somebody else. I just downloaded it. And you can see that there are 46 cards here, all about ancient Egypt. It was written by this person. And whenever we take new, uh, flashcards that somebody else created, it is always a good idea to look and see if it's of good quality. And now you can press study. And what, what it does with study is it gives you the question, you answer it yourself, and then you can change your work, check your work just by flipping it. So you can see the third through the sixth dynasties were there, who created the first pyramid. And you can see how this works. So you can keep on doing. And if you got it right, you mark correct. And that means that the next time you run through, you will not necessarily have that one. So you can see how you're building confidence and how you're building knowledge and slowly learning a large or a small set. Let me take you back here to the decks and show you I've just started this deck. It's got only one card. You can see it here. And then I want to add a card. And all I have to do is you see there's a term and there's a definition. So the term will be I teach reading, so phonics. And the definition is a method for teaching reading. I have a focus on sound speech. So now I've created this card, and I can use it. So I click Done. And now you can see I have two cards, and I can start studying them. And you can add to them as you go. You can create a large deck and then start studying. So this is flashcards. It's very basic. It doesn't have pictures. It doesn't have other things. But it does allow you to learn basic definitions, ideas, history classes when you need um, dates or events or people. This is a great way to memorize them. This is obviously not what everything that we want. Connections, relationships, and all of that are really, really important. And that's what the next three apps are going to be about. So I'm going to start with MindTree. MindTree is a mind mapping uh, app. You can create a few for free. And then if you want to expand it, you need to uh, you need to pay for more, so you have to consider that when you think about this. But if you want to look at this is the ones that the one that they created, you can see how you can create a mind map 
that has different colors, different branches, and allows you to present and organize your ideas uh, very, very well. And you can see that you can zoom out and see the whole picture. You can change colors, you can add nodes and all of that. Let me take you to a simpler map. I go back home and I go to the two nodes I created here. You can see I created very, very simple map. There's only two uh, things in there. But if I want to add to it, all I do is make another one. And this one will be, um, I don't know, self-regulation. And you can see that you can choose the color it's going to be in. So for some reason, I'm choosing this color. And now you can do this. And if you want to create another one in at the same level, um, let's do this. All I had to do was press like that, and now you can see it's coming out of the same one. So you can very quickly organize your thoughts and relate them to each other. So now you can bring out notes. And to each one of these, you can attach a web link or a picture or notes that you make. You can see here, I started a note. So you can actually make it more robust than on Word. So behind that one term that you're connecting, there's a lot more information. One of the great things about this one is while you can create only a few before they ask you for money, you can actually take the ones you created, make a picture out of them so they become static, and then save them and start a new one. Since we usually have only two or three things that we're actively learning and processing at a time, you can keep on doing that and saving the rest as pictures. And so you don't necessarily have to expand and do this uh, and pay for it. But you can. Uh, if you want. Um, another app that does something very similar is Inspiration. Inspiration used to be on uh, computers and they've expanded to other devices and this is the version that is on the iPad. It is a free version. As you can see, you can upgrade and get more, but it is a very good free version that you can use. This is a map that I created a while back that describes the work that I'm doing on different media as a professional, it is a complex map, but what you can see is you can use different symbols, you can use arrows, relationship to organize your note, so you start having a spatial relationship in the way uh, you think about that. And uh, in this case, I also, because it is complex, I also created a, a key to what do the different shapes look like. But if we create a new one, you can see how simple it is. So here, and uh, what is nice in this is they've created templates, so if you need something specific, uh, that's very easy. In this case, I just want a main idea template. So here's the main idea, and the main idea is having fun. It is the end of the summer, and now I can get another one. You see how simple it is? You just press on that uh, arrow. Very simple to work with. This is great for kids, even young kids, to work with because it is easy to manipulate. And if you want to move it around, you can just move it around. And then you add the text and organize it around. So this is inspiration, great stuff. You can share this. And if you see here, you can share it through a variety of ways. Uh, most importantly, you can save it to photos and you can mail it. The rest is with upgrades. And I don't think that matters as much as you'd think unless, again, you want to have it in Dropbox as a way to save it on the cloud. Uh, the program does save everything on your device, so those aren't lost. The last one, and this is an app I've shown before, is called Total Recall. It's very similar. It's a very quick way, again, to make those notes. Very similar idea. So here I have uses for iPads. This is my iPad mind map. And these are uses that teachers can have. And now if I want to add to the student, all I do is press on that plus sign. And here's the next bubble. So another way to organize all of that information and think about relationships and way uh, to organize it. So today, we talked about four different apps that can help you organize your notes. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.